This is me, and this is a lightning bolt striking dangerously close to my airplane. But have you ever wondered what happens when a plane gets struck by lightning? Over the course of history, rain and lightning have been a major issue for things that fly, like birds and even bees. Can't fly in rain. Can't fly in rain. When planes were first invented, weather conditions were a huge factor in flight prep. And while we've made some major advances in aviation, weather will still strand you at an airport for countless hours. So what exactly are the limits of planes these days? And what happens when you find yourself in the middle of a lightning storm while 10,000 feet in the air? In today's video, I test the limits of my TBM 850 and answer that exact question as I try to land at Kissimmee Airport in Florida. Jack Thunder 975, Charlie Alpha 26.4 for flight level 260. TBM 975, Charlie Alpha, Jack Center, Roger. So this is us checking in with Jacksonville Center and descending out of about 26,000 feet, 26,400 for 26,000 feet. 975, Charlie Alpha, okay. descending 18, level 240. Leaving uh, flight level 260 for 240, 975, Charlie Alpha. Okay, so that's Jacksonville Center stepping us down another 2,000 feet to flight level 240, so 24,000 feet. And right here, we're panning down to the weather that's at Kissimmee Airport. The winds are 11 knots, gusting to 17 knots. There's nine miles of visibility, light rain at the field, broken at 2,200 feet above the ground. So there's a ceiling 2,200 feet above the ground and then overcast at 3,000. It also in the remarks said that there's lightning, distant all quadrants at thunderstorm level two. So all around the field there's lightning, but nothing at the field. This is me planning about 15 minutes before landing what I'm expecting to see in Kissimmee. Right here on the screen, you can see there is thunderstorms along our route. So from get out, G-T-O-U-T, -T, all the way down to K-I-S-M. We've got some red and orange thunderstorms there that I'm a little bit worried about as I come in. This is airport information, Lima 2256, is the weather. Winds 16016, gust 20, visibility is seven miles, thunderstorm, light rain, ceilings 3000 broken. Temperature 26, two points 24, altimeter 3004. Pilots approaching use landing in departing runway 15. Advise on. So that's me getting the current weather at Kissimmee. A little bit of change from what I found on ADSB earlier. The ceilings are now at 3,000 feet and there's lightning at the field. So I'm just looking here at what it looks like. You can see there's some lightning around the field, but as I zoom out, I think it's gonna move past the field to the west as we get closer. They're at landing runway 15, so I put in the ILS 15 there to get set up and prepared for that approach ahead of time, so I'm ready. Approach, five Charlie Alpha. You clear us down to 6,000 or 5,000? TBM 5 Charlie Alpha, 6,000. Roger, 6,000, 5 Charlie Alpha. TBM 5 Charlie Alpha, be advised, starting in about 10 miles, you're going to begin encountering multiple areas of anything between light and extreme precipitation. Most of the extreme stuff is going to be off to your west. Uh, so when you talk to Orlando, if you need to deviate uh, to the east, would be a better option. But they'll be having a handoff on you here in a few minutes. 5 Charlie Alpha, Roger. Yeah, we're taking a look at it right now and trying to see how we're going to pick through it. Thanks. So all the yellow and orange and red here is what I'm worried about. He said most of the extreme precipitation is off to the west. So I know that they're going to take me in around the east. Yeah, approach, you've had some other folks going uh, this route? Uh, no, I mean, it's all developing right now. And I just sat down, but we really haven't worked very much into Orlando recently. I think most people have not been going down that direction. I know Orlando International is on the ground stop right now. Five Charlie Alpha, Roger. Thanks. So he just said something in that call that worried me a bit during the flight. He said Orlando International is on a ground stop. What that means is no commercial aviation aircraft are taking off or landing right now. So there is a ground stop due to extreme weather. So I know that I'm gonna have to go around Orlando International and possibly turn around and I have a backup plan to land in the Daytona Beach area. The one thing that gave me some confidence is the fact that he said, we just sat down and this is only now starting to develop. So he wasn't Orlando Approach yet, so I'm gonna check in with Orlando Approach next and see what they say about it. He's gonna switch me over, and then if they say we're good to go, I'm gonna continue. TBM 5 Charlie Alpha, contact Orlando Approach on a 124.8. 124.8, 5 Charlie Alpha. Orlando Approach, TBM 975 Charlie Alpha, 6000. TBM 975 Charlie Alpha, Orlando uh, Approach, advise with information Lima, you expect vectors for the visual approach on 15. Uh, we have Lima, and we'll expect uh, vectors for uh, the visual 1-5. So him telling me that he's giving me vectors, whoa, did you see that lightning? At night, it looks like it's 
a lot closer than it is. That lightning was probably still 40 miles away or so, um, but at night it can look like it's right next to the plane. He gave me vectors for the visual 1.5 to expect that, which means the weather's pretty good at Kissimmee. It sounds like he's confident that he's gonna be able to get me in. No, our five Charlie Alpha, turn right heading 250 and contact Orlando approach on 119.4. 250, uh, 119.4, five Charlie Alpha. Okay, he just switched me over to the controller that's gonna control me all the way into Kissimmee. So I'm gonna check in with him now. Orlando approach, 975, Charlie Alpha, 6000. Number 975, Charlie Alpha, one approach, Roger, to maintain 3000, stand by for deviations through an area of light precipitation between two heavy cells. Five Charlie Alpha. Number five Charlie Alpha, just to maintain 3000. Leaving 6000 for 3000. Okay, he's stepping me down from 6,000 feet to 3,000 feet and saying he's gonna vector me in between two heavy cells, which I can see on my screen there. There's two orange cells that are about 30 miles apart and he's gonna thread the needle. Number five, Charlie Alpha, and that gap is there at 11 o'clock, about 15 miles. If you need 10 degrees to the left, that's approved at this time. All right, we'll take 10 left, uh, 2405, Charlie Alpha. This is him giving me small deviations to the left as we try to kind of go in between these cells. You can see that, that lightning bolt there in the distance and I'm just kind of playing it by ear right now. I have an out, I can turn back around and go the way I came. Approach, five Charlie Alpha, okay, 10 more. Yeah. Number five Charlie Alpha, who's requested? Five Charlie Alpha. So that's me asking for 10 more degrees to the left. I'm just kind of threading the needle as I see the storms develop. We've got an area of about 20 miles, 15 miles on either side that we're just kind of uh, shooting the gap here. You can see lightning kind of popping off the nose there. Uh, approach, five Charlie Alpha, get 10 more to the left, 220. Five Charlie Alpha, who's requested to maintain 2,000. Uh, do you say 2,000? Five Charlie Alpha, yes sir, to maintain 2,000. All right, five Charlie Alpha, leave it 3,000 for 2,000. Okay, I'm asking for 10 more left. I'm kind of the only show in town. I don't hear a lot of other radio comms, so I can kind of go left or right as I need to from the looks of it. You can still see kind of lightning popping off in the distance off the left and the right here. Approach, five Charlie Alpha, get left 10 more, 210. Five Charlie Alpha, who's requested? Five Charlie Alpha. So you can see the gap that I'm flying through right here. I asked for 10 more left. You can see lightning going off on the right side. And I'm just kind of threading the needle still here. And you can see my head is out there. I'm very attentive. I'm looking at the screen. I'm looking out to left and right to make sure that we're safe and right there uh, in the middle of these two large cells. It really just kind of spread apart perfectly for us during this approach. Typically, lightning can strike from about 10 miles away, give or take. So I felt comfortable going through here, and I have a lot of flying experience. If you're a new pilot, you should absolutely land at Daytona Beach before going through something like this. Very capable aircraft, very well-trained uh, Navy test pilot. So this is not something that I would advise in a small Cessna or something very early on in your flying career. You can see right here on the screen, those two cells that we went right in between. Um, and I'm zoomed out to about 100 miles on here, so it looks like they're really tight together, but we had about 10 to 15 miles on each side for those cells. So at this point, we are past the thunderstorms. I'm, I feel out of the woods. Uh, I'm less stressed and still, remember, I'm set up for the visual approach to runway 15, but I input the ILS 15 just in case the weather was bad or there was uh, thunderstorms or the visibility got worse there. Uh, Charlie Alpha, and uh, how's the visibility between you and the airport, Kissimmee? Uh, it, it's clear, uh, 5 Charlie Alpha. I don't have it in sight yet, but I'm looking. So he asked me if I can see the runway. I still can't see it. It's, uh, it's still a little hazy. Um, I'm not sure that I can make the visual at this point, so I still have the backup of the ILS-15, expecting that maybe I'll ask for that and clear, clear it for it. There's some low-laying clouds here around 500 feet, it looks like, but I think we'll be able to get it, no problem. 5 Charlie Alpha, just let me know. If not, I'll give you the ILS-15, not a problem. Just let me know. 5 Charlie Alpha, roger. Number five, Charlie Alpha, you know what? I'm looking at the weather here. Looks like, uh, yeah, let's plan for the ILS for now. Okay, uh, should I expect vectors? Uh, number five, Charlie Alpha, I'm turn 10 degrees to the right for now. Okay, 10 right, that'll give me a 220. I'll expect vectors to final for the ILS 15, five, Charlie Alpha. So at this point, very quickly, he said, you know, if you don't see the runway right now, let's just set you up for the ILS. It's the best decision and probably something I should have done from the beginning and just say, hey, I'll take the ILS. I just really wanted to get in quick because you can see at the runway on my screen, there are some thunderstorms approaching Kissimmee Airport and I wanted to avoid those and make sure I got in as quick as I could. Number 975 Charlie Alpha, you're about seven miles from Wazi, turn left and then 180, maintain uh, 2,000 to establish on the localizer, clear for the ILS 15 approach. 
Uh, turn left 180, maintain 2000 until established on the localizer cliff, the ILS 15975, try alpha. So he's clearing me for an instrument approach, the ILS 15, which is what we do in the clouds or when we can't see the airport or when we're training for instruments. At this point, he gives me a couple things that is required for a controller to give me. Distance from the final approach fix, which he gave me. A heading, which he turned left 180. An altitude to maintain, which was 2,000 feet until established. And then he cleared me for the ILS 15. All those things are what I need. I'm turning left to 180. I'm maintaining my altitude and I'm setting up for final on the ILS. Number five, Charlie Alpha, contact Simi Tower, 124.45. Five, Charlie Alpha, switching tower. Thanks for the help tonight. At this point, he switches me over to tower. I'm on established on the ILS 15. And I just say thank you for the help tonight because it was a little hairy. Simi Tower, TBM 975, Charlie Alpha, with the ILS 15, full stop. TBM 975, Charlie Alpha, Simi Tower, way 15, clear to land. Clear to land, 15, five, Charlie Alpha. I check in with Tower, let him know I'm on the ILS 15, and he approves me to land. So he said, I'm clear to land, there's no other traffic in the area. At this point, I'm starting to set up for landing. I'm getting everything set up. You can see me switching some buttons, uh, setting up my lights, turning on the landing lights on. And at this point, I'm gonna drop the gear. That master caution light that just went off is an ADS-B fail that pops on every now and then in my TBM 850. And right here, you can see me dropping the gear. I got my green lights and I'm putting the flaps down, getting all set up right there. You can see three green lights for the gear. I'm always checking that. I'm out here, I'm turning the yaw damper off. We're 500 feet above the runway. And in the distance, you can see the runway right off the nose. You can see the rabbit lights, the green uh, threshold lights. And then you can also see some of the glide path lights. So there, each runway typically has a three degree glide path. And so we have lights at night where you can see if you're above or below glide path. So here I'm looking for two white and two red. So you can see my two white lights and two red lights. I'm on glide path. And you can see some rain hitting the windscreen here. Minimums, minimums. That's me hitting the minimums on the ILS. The GPS is still on at that point, and I hit the minimums, it lets me know. That way, if I didn't see the runway at that point, I would have to go missed approach if I was in the clouds. You can see the runway, I'm in a safe position to land, and I'm coming in for landing runway 15. Checking my gears down finally, coming over the threshold, nice flare. Typically, I hear airspeed right about the time airspeed. I touch down there. You can see the runway center line going right down my screen. And we're touched down runway 15 in Kissimmee. We made it safe. Again, very dangerous approach coming in. Just a lot of lightning, a lot of thunderstorms going on. If I didn't have a ton of experience flying, lots of hours, comfortable in the aircraft, good with the FMS and the GPS and everything that I do, it wouldn't be something that I would attempt. I've flown in conditions just like this many times. But again, this was probably right on the edge of something that I would do at my level of experience. So if you're a new pilot or somebody just getting started, I would highly recommend you avoid flying in conditions like this, but I wanted to show you the capability of the TBM and what's possible. I was never in the clouds once that entire flight. I was always visual outside and able to see what's going on, even though I was on an instrument clearance. Fortunately, we did not get hit by lightning tonight, but to answer the question, what happens when an aircraft gets hit by lightning? It really depends. Typically, nothing. However, it can be catastrophic. It can actually shut down all of your electric equipment. It can really damage the skin and the outside of the aircraft. So I try to avoid flying within 10 miles or 15 miles of lightning whenever possible. However, planes are built to get struck by lightning and it actually occurs more often than you think. While it's probably extremely unlikely that my plane will ever be struck by lightning, commercial planes are struck by lightning once or twice per year per airplane. That is an incredible stat. That means that the airplane you're flying in has probably been struck by lightning 10 or even 20 times in the last few years. So commercial airplanes designed and structured that way, my airplane, I have no desire to allow it to get hit by lightning. So I hope you keep flying with me right here on YouTube. And who knows, maybe one day you'll jump in the cockpit with me and we'll go out and fly.